Hi everybody, John here. Okay, first thing I'm going to show you is this is the mix. This is the mix with the magnesium filings and then the iron pyrite. And what we're going to do is this makes a great mix and a great paste for the battery. But you want to depolarize the battery. So this is what we're going to use, MN203, which is manganese dioxide 3. So as soon as I get this mixed up, I'll be back to show you the next step. All right, we're back. Okay, I'm going to use this pinch method once again. But as you can see, I don't quite have a pinch, and I'm just going to put the manganese dioxide in there. Now be very careful with this stuff because you don't want to breathe it and you don't want to get it on your hands. Just keep your hands washed while using this material as it gets absorbed through your lungs and through your skin. So carefully get it down in the solution and mix it around. And you can see it's turning black. Alright. So you get it mixed up good. Without doing it too too much because you don't want any dust. Okay. So we'll go over this again. The mix here was two teaspoons of Rigel salts, one teaspoon of Epsom salts, magnesium filings, and iron pyrite. And you can see actually the little pieces in there, what it actually looks like. And the next step is to wet this and make a paste out of it so that we can paste the, uh, the crystal. So I'll be back. Okay. So now we've got this pretty much mixed up and you can see that it's just a paste. Now one other thing I want to tell you is you want a pinch of the hydrate number five in here also because that's important because what you want the crystal to do is retain a locked in water after it's baked. So I'll show you the next step of this and I'll be right back. Okay, so now the next step is taking the paste that you've made and you put it on here now. It's up to you what kind of material you want to use. I'm just using a, a cloth on this one, a cotton cloth. And what I'm doing is making sure that it's absorbed in the pores. Now, the next, so I'll be back when I'm about to put this in the oven so you can see. All right, now we've got this pasted, and the next step is going to be to bake it. So we're going to take it over here to this oven, and this is for pressing plastics together, but I use it to just bake the surface. And that oven's going to go up to about 300 to 400 degrees. And as soon as this gets semi-baked, I'll pull it out so you can see what it's going to look like. And then, of course, that has to be flipped over. And the other side has to be um, doped with the... Uh, in other words, it has to be painted on the other side the same way we did this side, and then we bake the whole crystal, and we'll be back. Okay, so now we're going to look at this crystal. We're going to see how it's baking here. So, as you can see, it's turning white up here at the top, which means it's baking pretty good, but you can see it's forming little dips and valleys and things like that in the crystal. And what is actually happening is the crystal 
as it bakes starts to grow and so the next step of this process is to turn that over and bake the other side and we'll do that in just a minute and I'll be right back all right now I've turned it over on the plate the plates warm and I want you to see that I'm painting the other side of the crystal so I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll put it back in the oven and let it bake and then we're going to get the final product but make sure when you brush this in that it soaks in the material that you want to use be right back okay I thought I would mention that now that I've got it painted that you can do this with any material that you can mix up into a paste it'll all pretty much work the same it's just that you have to figure out the depolarizer for the material that you want to use um, you could take apart an old D battery a carbon zinc D battery take the manganese dioxide out wash it thoroughly and I mean wash it thoroughly and then dry it out in the sun and then you could use that powder if you're doing say carbon or uh, zinc cell or if you're doing a carbon magnesium cell that would work pretty much the same it's very important that you find the depolarizer to remove the hydrogen from the positive pole so we're going to bake this and then I'll be back when it's finished baked okay I pulled this out of the uh, oven at an intermediate stage so you can see that it's drying correctly here and we need just a little bit more drying time because what we want is to be able to um, cut this material so we're going to go back into the oven for about another five maybe seven minutes and this thing is hot really hot it's almost at 400 degrees so I gotta watch this very closely because we don't want to bake it too much so as soon as it's ready I'll be back and we'll assemble the cell dry and we'll look at the current and the voltage dry and then we'll move on to what exactly is going on inside the cell be right back okay I've finished baking the material but I want you to notice look at around the edges it's white see so this sort of makes a diaphragm for the water to pass through or the ions to pass through and these are on the two surfaces so what we're going to do is take it over there but that's what it should look like after it's baked and I don't want you to make any mistake about this it took time to bake and it's relatively dry I mean it's it's dry so what we want to do is set it up on our electrode which is right here which we just fired but we're not going to add any pyrite or anything we're just going to add it to the electrode here which is the copper blackened and so when I get all this set up over there I'll be right back and we'll go through that okay we're over here at the bench and you can see that we have the electrode we get some light here hopefully and we just took a new piece of magnesium so there's nothing here and this is the crystal after being baked and um, if I lay it on here and push it down you can see there's no current at all nothing is lit up here all right so there's no voltage there now if you take your voltmeter chuck and touch across there so that everybody can see and we'll just take the load off remove 
that stuff out of the way so you can see. Okay, so here's his meter, and he's just going to touch where the terminals are. And that's all you have. You see it varying around. No matter what you do, it's in a dry state, and there is no energy. It's all over the place, so whatever it's detecting, it's detecting. Okay, so the next thing Chuck's going to do is, I've told you all on the group that my cells are built to burn water as a fuel cell. Except this time what Chuck and I have done, so you understand depolarizing, we've added that MnO2O3, which is magnesium oxide 3. Okay, so Chuck's going to wet that. And you're going to place that electrode on there and let it sit for a minute. The electrolyte. And pushing it down very lightly, he's going to let the top, going to wet the top surface down. Because this cell burns water. Okay. And just looking at the magnesium, we're just going to place it down there and push. And it's going to take it a few seconds or a few minutes to get fully. Okay, so now if he hooks up. See the current right away, but it's not stabilized yet because it has to work its way in. So you can see right away you have power. So now he'll add a little bit more water. And what's going to happen is we'll show you. This has to sit for a day. So now as he adds the water and it's soaking it up, the current's going to keep increasing. See? So as soon as this oxide builds the water and absorbs into the crystal, the current will go up. Now, Let's go a step further. Let's disconnect that one and show you one that's been running for about two or three days now. See, it totally sticks to it. It bonds. So now, this is in a pretty dry straight. Would you say that, Chuck, touch that? Mm -hmm. It's dry. So right away, in a dry state, you can see that we have current and that we have light. Okay, so now watch. Just wet on each end of the crystal. Just a few drops. And you watch the current. And there is no, what's happening here is there's no hydrogen. The hydrogen gets absorbed by this oxide. And so there is nothing, and the magnesium is being protected by the black, which is forming on there right now. So see, now if we give this a little bit more water, we'll be up to that current level. And this is a pretty stable cell. So Chuck's just going to water it a little bit more, and we'll test this one. Okay, you can see we're almost there. The crystal's almost stabilized. And in fact, it is. So it's going to do it on its own now. Now the bonding has taken place in the crystal. And we don't have to touch it after that. We don't have to put any pressure. The crystal will grow to the magnesium and grow to the copper. So, I think that I've shown you what I need to show you on how we did it. You may find a different way to do it, but thanks for watching. Bye.